I, I said for years very strongly that I would not publish a work on Greek because my heart is so much into ministry. But I become increasingly concerned because so much of what's out there in the name of linguistics is not dealing with the language as it should. And um, I came back into town from a trip a while back and met with some men on a Wednesday. And they, one of them said to me, you need to do it. And I said, it will never happen. The next day in class, I got convinced that it should happen after you asked me enough questions. But anyhow, there are those who are releasing me. And I am in a writing mode. And therefore, the nature of this class is I am going to do it somewhat differently because I am actually documenting what I do as I go through here because I will attempt to publish within about two and a half years. And so therefore this will be foundational to that if you will. Um, but it becomes increasingly evident to me in the process that, um, and I, I do this for a reason, I, I don't, I, having my name in print isn't the issue to me, it doesn't do that. I, if I can open a door, because the door isn't being opened, and some of you can take it a step further, I said that I would wait till some of you wrote it, and then I would write the forward. I suppose it is I will write it, but then you can take it another step in another generation. Um, but that is where it is, and uh, the book will be to deal with not only morphology, but phonology, because if you don't understand phonology, you cannot understand the morphology. That's just the name of the game. If you make us, we did this. When you make us, and a z, you can s and z. The only difference between those two is s is on voice. Z is voice. And why z goes and makes all the vibration is because these vocal cords, if you will, the walls, they 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 come in like this, and therefore they cause greater vibration. Are you with me? So what happens is, in every case where you have a quote-unquote voice letter, is because there is a constriction, and where there's constriction, there's going to be vibration because of that. When you, for example, I make a T, the air just goes through the passage. Are you with me? It just comes right up, and it passes by the alveolar ridge on the way out. That's how I make a T. Morphology is a branch of linguistics. I, you've done this before, so I will get there to show you a point. The branch of linguistics that deals with units and meanings of language. So morphology is a study of the written form of the language, directly controlled by phonology. This is from Mounts. In other words, they're, they're sisters. They can't do the one without the other. Phonology, a branch of linguistics, deals with speech. It consists of related studies of phonetics and phonemics. Phonetics is the such things as a point of articulation. We've talked about this, whether it's voiced or unvoiced. That's phonetics. Phonemics are the study of sounds that are meaningful part of a language that enables one to make a distinction between words, okay? I keep going. When you pronounce these two, when you understand these two, they are monothongs. They're not diphthongs. They haven't been for, what, what 2,600 years now. So, so just understand that, right? They're monothongs, okay? These are not diphthongs. You say they look like it. Let me tell you why, okay? Just, just so this is for free, okay? Greeks have problem with S's. Hebrew, it's got them all over the place. Seen and Sheen and Sami, it's got all these S's, right? So they, they, they end up with this letter, and it, it could be this way or this way, and frankly, they don't need it because they don't like the S's anyhow. Are you with me? Yes? Mm -hmm. So they've got this letter sitting there that they have no use for. So they say, ha, I tell you what. We, we've been making this letter, this sound, but we don't have a letter for it, so let's put it at the end of the alphabet, and it'll be a long O, and that's why you have omega at the end, okay? See, when you have logos, you come to the plural, you have logon. And really, which is this, okay? Are you with me? So when you have a lathia like this, you should really come to the genitive as being a lay they on. That's what it should be. But it messes a lot of stuff up because you've got one down here that looks like that too. So what they did was they said forget that. So therefore what they did was they put, they borrowed. They borrowed from here and brought it down here. So they made this a lay they own. Because it would mess it up if they made it long alpha. Are you with me? Just wait for a bit. 
Now you see why they make a statement in some of the books that if, wherever your accent was, see the accent is here? Wherever the accent was in the nominative singular, it's going to be a circumflex over the ultimate in the gender plural no matter where it was. Why? Because, everybody, if the ultima is long, let's go, if the ultima is long, the antepenal cannot be accented, and the penal, if accented all, must have an acute. In order to watch this, okay? You end up with, now, all, by the way, all into is, you put a two on the end of English, you put a sigma on the end in Greek. But the minute you put a sigma on here, it's going to do what to this thing, see? You can't have a sigma there. So the minute you put the sigma there is what's going to happen, the liquid is going to drop. And when the liquid drops, what you end up having, you see, is this becomes ace, right? Huh? Now why is the ace there is because it's compensating for the loss of the liquid. You can't drop a constant out without compensation. These are diphthongs here. These are real diphthongs here, okay? <coughs> These are glides. I and ow and oo and o and we, okay? It glides into a Y or glides into a W. These are all glides here, they're diphthongs. These are not diphthongs up here. You've got to remember that. It changes everything if you do, okay?